Okay, hey everybody. Good day to you all. God bless you and welcome to today's study of the Word of God. Now we're going to pick it up today, Deuteronomy chapter 2. Uh, going to be a continuation of Israel's uh, history being reviewed, um, gone over by Moses. Before we get started, uh, let's go to our Father in prayer like we always do. So, Yahweh, Heavenly Father, pray that you open eyes, open ears this day. And let us receive the wisdom that you would have us receive from your word today. So in Yeshua's precious name, y'all, let's get right into it. Uh, Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 2, verse 1, and it reads, <clears throat> Moses speaking. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness <clears throat> by the way of the Red Sea. This is turned and left Kadesh Barnea, as the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. <clears throat> Excuse me, verse 2. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, verse 3, Ye have compassed this mount long enough. Turn you northward. 4. And command thou the people, saying, you are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore. It means watch for yourselves uh, carefully. Verse 5. Meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land. No, not so much as a foot breath, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. That's Esau's. Leave him be. Six. Ye shall buy meat of them for money that ye may eat. And ye shall also buy water of them for money that ye may drink. I'm not trying to take any freebies here. You're going to pay for your food and your water. Verse seven. For the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness. These forty years, the Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. And that's how it is, beloved. If, if you are a Christian and you serve the living God and you're on a mission for Him, uh, you're not going to lack anything. God's going to... Uh, take care of all the things you can't take care of and he's going to provide for you and you're going to have exactly what you, you're going to need. Now, it may not always be a bed of roses, but God's children can cut it. We don't need a, a bed of roses always. <clears throat> Verse 8. And when we passed by from our brethren, the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, through the way of the plain from Elath and from Ezion Geber, we turned and passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. Now, this Elath means trees or grove in the Hebrew, and Ezion Geber means backbone like of a man. Verse 9 And the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither Contend with them in battle, for I will not give thee of their land for a possession, because I have given Ar unto the children of Lot for a possession. Ar means city. 10. The Emims dwelt therein in times past, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims. Now these Emims, this, this word Emim in the Hebrew means the terrors or the terrible ones. And this was a race of the Nephilim. <clears throat> Just like the Anakims. This is the giants. 11. Which also were accounted giants as the Anakims. But the Moabites call them Emims. That's the name they gave for them. 12. The Horims. Horims, meaning uh, cave dweller. This was also another race of the Nephilim. Also dwelt in Seir before time. But the children of Esau seceded them when they had destroyed them from before them. 
and dwelt in their stead, as Israel did unto the land of his possession, which the Lord gave unto them. Now, all these giants, uh, race of the Nephilim, this was of the second influx. And uh, the first ones were destroyed by the flood of Noah. And this was of the second influx of the fallen angels. You can read about that in Genesis chapter 6, verse 4. And uh, this was part of Satan's attempt to pollute uh, the seed line, or second attempt to pollute the seed line that Christ would come through by these fallen angels coming down to earth, leaving their habitation, coming to earth, and uh, seducing woman. And so uh, they would have to be destroyed. And so that's what this is. Uh, Esau seceded them when they had destroyed them. This was how God uh, destroyed the second influx. 13. Now rise up, said I, and get you over the brook Zered. And we went over the brook Zered. Zered meaning exuberant in growth or lined with shrubbery. 14. And the space in which we came from Kadesh Barnea until we were come over the brook Zered was thirty and eight years until all the generation of the men of war were wasted out from among the host as the Lord swore unto them. This was that evil and wicked generation that would not go up in and possess the promised land. And they brought up, brought up a slanderous report of the land. And they didn't believe God that he had defeated the enemies. And so instead of going in to possess uh, the promised land of Canaan, uh, God said that they would abide in the wilderness wandering uh, for 38 years, 40 years, until all of that generation was dead. And that's exactly what happened. 15. For indeed the hand of the Lord was against them to destroy them from among the host until they were consumed. And you don't want the hand of the Lord to be against you. I mean... Our God, he's a, he's a very loving and uh, kind Father, full of mercy. But to his enemies, uh, he does not mess around. 16. So it came to pass, when all the men of war were consumed and dead from among the people, all of that gen wicked generation of unbelief, when they were gone, 17, that the Lord spake unto me, saying, 18, Thou art to pass over through Ar, the coast of Moab, this day. Verse 19, And when thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon, distress them not, nor meddle with them. For I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, because I have given it unto the children of Lot for a possession. This is in Perin. That also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time, and the Ammonites called them Zamzumims. Giants, uh, offspring of the Nephilim. 21. A people great and many and tall as the Anakims. But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they seceded them and dwelt in their stead. Again, God getting rid of that second influx of uh, fallen angels, their offspring. 22. As he did to the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, when he destroyed the Horims from before them, and they seceded them and dwelt in their stead even unto this day. 23. And the Avims, that's another name for the offspring of the Nephilim, which dwelt in Hazarim, even unto Azah, the Kaphtarims, which came forth out of Kaphtor, destroyed them and dwelt in their stead. Again, God getting rid of all these uh, offspring of the Nephilim. Hazarim means, in the Hebrew, it means yards. And Azah, meaning strong, and Kaphtor, meaning uh, a wreath-shaped island. Verse 24. 
Rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over the river Arnon. Behold, I have given unto thine hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin to possess it, and contend with him in battle. 25. Or Sihon means uh, tempestuous. And the word tempestuous, I had to look it up. It means a strong or turbulent, conflicting emotion. Verse 25. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven, who shall hear report of thee and shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee. We're going to hear all these uh, victories that Israel had gotten because the Lord was among them and words going to get around and the nations are going to be afraid to uh, come against Israel. 26. And I sent messengers, this is God clearing the path to bring his word to pass. 26. And I sent messengers out of the wilderness of Kedemoth unto Sihon, king of Heshbon, with words of peace, saying, Kedemoth meaning beginnings. 27. Let me pass through thy land. I will go along by the highway. I will neither turn unto the right hand nor to the left. 28. Thou shalt sell me meat for money, that I may eat, and give me water for money, that I may drink. Only I will pass through on my feet. I'm not trying to take anything free here. I'm going to pay for our food and water. 29. This is in Perin. As the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and the Moabites, which dwell in Ar, did unto me, until I shall pass over Jordan into the land which the Lord our God giveth us. 30. But Sihon king of Heshbon would not let us pass by him. For the Lord thy God, Yahweh thy Elohim, thy creator, hardened his spirit and made his heart obstinate. Uh, this obstinate means steadfastly minded. <clears throat> that he might deliver him into thy hand as appeareth this day. Kind of like he did unto Pharaoh. Hardened his heart. 31. And the Lord said. Probably didn't have to harden it too much. 31. And the Lord said unto me. Behold. I have begun to give Sihon and his land before thee. Begin to possess. That thou mayest inherit his land. 32. Then Sihon came out against us. And all his people. To fight at Jahaz. Jahaz meaning trodden down, and that's what would happen to Sihon. Uh, Israel would uh, trodden, Jah trodden Sihon down. 33. And the Lord our God delivered him before us, and we smote him and his sons and all his people. Of course, Israel doing the trotting because God was with them. Never forget that. If God wasn't with them, they would have gotten whipped. 34. And we took all his cities at that time and utterly destroyed the men and the women and the little ones of every city. We left none to remain, just as God had said, 35. Only the cattle we took for a prey unto ourselves and the spoil of the cities which we took. 36. From Eroer, Eroer meaning ruin, uh, ruins, which is by the brink of the river Arnon, and from the city that is by the river, the city, talking about Ar of Moab, even unto Gilead, there was not one city too strong for us. The Lord our God delivered all unto us. 37. Only unto the land of the children of Ammon thou camest not, nor unto any place of the river Jabbok, nor unto the cities in the mountains, nor unto whatsoever the Lord our God forbade us. We didn't go and try to take take any of the cities that God didn't tell us to take. Because, you know, if they would have done that, they would have gotten whipped because God wouldn't have been with them. And that's going to conclude chapter 2 of the book of Deuteronomy and today's study of the Word of God uh, covering... Uh, Israel's uh, history being reviewed. I love you all because y'all love studying God's word. 
uh, chapter by chapter and verse by verse, just how God would have you study it. Um, more importantly, God loves you for it. You know, whenever you study his word, you glean the fruit of righteousness and you partake of that spiritual food that provides you peace of mind. And also, when you read his word, you learn how not to be deceived. And what do I mean by that? This deception that's coming upon this final wicked generation is Satan uh, going to be cast to this earth by Michael with his fallen angels. And Satan is going to show up and pretend to be Jesus Christ. He's going to work miracles in the sight of men that if you haven't read the word of God and you don't know that the false Christ comes first pretending to be Christ, that you might just fall into worship him thinking that he's Jesus Christ and you're going to end up worshiping Satan. The beautiful thing is, Mark chapter 13, verse 26, God foretold us all things, and we don't have to suffer that deception. When we read the word of God, we, we know what's going to happen. God tells us everything that's going down, so there's no surprises to us. We know exactly what's coming, and we can be prepared for it, whereby we won't be deceived and uh, fall into that hole of worshiping Satan when the Christians think that it's going to be Jesus Christ. Remember, a child can count from one to seven. And Satan comes at the sixth trump pretending to be Christ. The true Christ doesn't return until the seventh trump. That's about as simple as it gets, folks. Um, and God is simple and natural, and, and his word is easy to where even a child can understand. So pick it up and read it, and don't be deceived, and be blessed. All right, love you all. Don't miss the next lecture. Thank you for watching.